Hey adapters, I'm Doug Parsons. I'm a partner at Simpatico Studios where we live stream conversations about complex business and social challenges with professionals like yourself who are working on the same issues. Our shows are live stream in front of a global audience of your professional peers on Simpatico.tv. I'm building a new type of online community for professionals like yourself on the Climate Adaptation Channel. If you're a regular listener of my America Adapts podcast, I think you'll find that we're taking our conversations about important problems, policies, and solutions to the next level here. And if you're interested in being a guest, we'd love to hear from you. And now join us for this latest episode. Hey, Adapters, welcome back. Today we have two guests. One is environmental activist Asan Roni. An Oshaka Fellow and Global Shaper of the World Economic Forum, Ashan founded Green Savers. He completed his Bachelor Master's in Anthropology from the University of Dhaka. He's doing his Master's in McPhil Research on Urban Green Space Management of the Dhaka Metropolitan Area. Asan will introduce us to Green Savers, which aims to help Dhaka fight climate change through greening the urban landscape. Green Savers is an environmental nonprofit that includes maintenance programs for urban gardens and trees, as well as educational entertainment for school children with Ashan's unique approach to Enviro Entertainment. Also joining us, and you know, I want you to sort of give us a little bit more background on, on yourself, um, Shadman, is you, you do marketing branding for Green Savers too, but welcome to the show, guys. Hello. Hello. And Hi. I... I did, and I did that sort of big introduction to Asan, but Shadman, could you give a, a, a bit more formal uh, background on who you are with the organization before we get started here? Uh, sure. Uh, I look after, you know, the branding and the products for Green Savers. I've been uh, working, uh, I, I helped develop the school programs and I helped develop the uh, urban, uh, urban project seminars that, that Green Savers has. And I also helped develop the product products that we try try and um, sell actually from green savers so for example right now currently we are focusing heavily on uh developing hydro hydroponics for uh to help people in urban farming so i'm currently in charge of that so i'm currently in charge of uh, helping people understand what hydroponics is and how it can benefit us and how you can build greenery in even small spaces uh, through in, in a small urban garden or even indoors. Okay, and Asan, just give us a bit more background on Green Savers. How old is the organization? You know, how long have you been working there? And we're gonna kind of dig into some of the work that you guys do. Oh, thank you. Uh, Green Savers started back to 2010 when I was an university student, um, I started Green Savers uh, with a vision to make the city uh, green uh, with rooftop gardening. And, and, and I thought that um, uh, if I can create a generation, I mean school children, uh, aware and, and motivated for plantation, then uh, and, and they can inspire their parents to make their roof uh, green, a greener roof. Then, then we start, uh, started working on school. Uh, we uh, try to uh, teach uh, or learn together with kids uh, how to grow plants, how to grow ma and maintain this. And we were trying to um, uh, create empathy of, of plants with through them. And and when uh, we found that uh, kids are enjoying planting trees, nursing trees, and they are getting uh, feedback, they're uh, they, they, they're um, after their maintenance, plants became. Uh, Give, uh, started giving flower fruits and vegetables they found that they are they can do something uh, they they have that creativity to do something then then they got the interest uh, or to, to work on green uh, and, and they spread this to their parents to their home uh, and, and and then the parents called us um, uh, for root gardening support and that in is that in that process, we started working with uh, the beneficiaries, so that is um, the city dweller, um, from school to household, uh, and, and we started setting up rooftop garden uh, in a, in a, and, 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 and low cost maintenance model. Uh, and after uh, the uh, setting up the garden, we started uh, another popular service that is urban gardening service. Uh, that is, uh, we call it uh, tree doctor service uh, because uh, you know uh, for 
uh, for garden garden maintenance uh, in, in city uh, though people ha don't have the time and, and they don't, don't have the uh, expertise uh, to maintain this so uh, our tree dog service became very popular in the city within a short time and then we started the tree hospital and mobile tree mobile plants clinic uh, so these initiative became very popular um, um, to, to, to the city dweller uh, that uh, that's all the, we are um, working uh, with green savers that is we are setting rooftop garden we are maintaining this uh, we are serving uh, with uh, tree hospital plants clinic and tree doctor uh, um, uh, people can connect us through their uh, through an Android app. We have Plants Doctor and Hotline. Uh, they can uh, even connect with this hotline. And 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 and, uh, and our popular program, school-based program, Plant for Planet, uh, Trillionaire. These programs became very popular in schools. We uh, we became uh, we were trying to motivate uh, school children. Uh, for green and, and when we, we can we, we are able to motivate them they motivate their parents then parents call us for assistance in this process we are um, extending the urban gardening services in the city okay so you know great you guys are covering a lot of ground and i guess shodman when i think of rooftop farming you know it, it sounds good but why rooftop farming what's the value there what's going on why is it something you're trying to encourage and i guess shodman i'll ask you that first all right. Uh, so rooftop farming is, well, there are multiple benefits to rooftop farming. If I talk about it in a urban planning perspective, Dhaka actually is a land with very, very few uh, open spaces where you can plant trees, but it is also a place with over 500,000 roofs. So in a city planning perspective, it makes sense that we cover those roofs in green instead of, you know, the very small amount of land that we have uh, but for the individual rooftop gardening not only provides uh, fresh food and fresh vegetables every day it also helps you reduce your carbon footprint which means you're not bringing in uh, bringing in food from outside dhaka you're uh, actually going inside your garden so it helps cut down on the transport costs uh, it also saves money and it's healthy for you as well so both for an individual benefit and both for a city planning perspective, rooftop gardening just makes so much more sense, particularly in a densely populated area like Dhaka. Okay, so maybe Asan, maybe you could speak to this or either one is just that you, so you do rooftop farming and it's providing food and such. You'd mentioned working with kids, but are these individuals who are living on, an, it, they're doing it on their own homes or their own apartment buildings, or is there more an organized way that sort of saying we're creating these rooftop farms and this food, we're actually going to sell to local markets or is it a whole mix? How, who's like, is the food just produced for people that actually do the farming? Uh, thank you. Uh, let me add something with Shadban. That is, uh, you, you know, Dhaka is becoming a city with urban heat island. This is a prime concern uh, to make the city greener. Uh, even the government, the city corporation, uh, they are working together to make the city green. Uh, but the main thing is that uh, that is uh, safe food. This is the prime concern, even uh, because uh, in in the city, uh, as the this is the mostly populated city in the world. So um, uh, the so uh, sometimes we, we most of the cases we don't have um, uh, safe food, uh, and and then rooftop garden uh, or rooftop farming is such a, a hidden opportunity to um, to produce. Uh, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables from the garden and and and, and when we made people understand that is uh, from your garden use using your spare uh, spaces of your roof you can produce your uh, your uh, kitchen support uh, and, and and then people found that yes this is uh, such an opportunity to um, uh, use our uh, open spaces and 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 uh, to harvest uh, green fresh greens and 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 the most ex exciting part of a rooftop garden is uh, they are uh, when they found that uh, they can easily grow uh, vegetables, fruits um, with a little effort. They are uh, they are they are they are they are having uh, they are having more uh, interest on it because uh, you know the soil quality of Bangladesh is very very uh, fine. So uh, this is an added benefit that is our soil is good and 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 our water is available. 
So uh, Rooftop Garden has become very popular in, in short time because uh, the technology are available here. And, and, and another uh, important benefit, uh, important support that is now government is going to um, uh, uh, give a tax rebate that is 10% holding tax free uh, uh, who, those who have the rooftop garden. This is, uh, th that has become uh, an, another uh, window for the urban uh, dwellers to make their city, make the rooftop green. And Shadman, in th th that's great. And I guess as you get more of these things and it helps with the sort of urban heat island effect, how much more is talking about these um, rooftop gardens as a way to mitigate climate change as, as specifically the impact? Is that part of your branding and marketing that this is why you should do it? I mean, there's the food aspect of it, but how much like how's climate change really sort of playing a role in all that? Well, um, climate change is actually a really big part of our branding, for example, and particularly if you're, it depends, kind of depends whom we are talking to, actually, because if you're speaking, if you're talking to the average home dweller, you know, uh, we, we cannot promote uh, climate change, you know, we cannot get them to solely uh, care about climate change for, uh, to decide on why, whether to invest in a garden or not. We need to tell, tell, tell them, look, you're getting fresh fruits, you're getting fresh vegetables, and from Green Savers, we can also give you trained gardeners who will come to your house and provide some garden service for you. Or even we can come and help set up everything that you can ever want in a garden. And we we need to showcase those particular benefits, such as, you know, uh, we need to tell them, you know, you're getting these fresh fruits and you're saving money. And, uh, you know, it's right at the, at your doorstep. So why not, you know, uh, go for a garden? But uh, to particular, uh, to some offices that we uh, actually uh, provide our service to as well, to them, we promote climate change and we uh, actually target that part of their hearts, right? Uh, for example, if it, you know, a garden can be a part of your corporate social responsibility. Uh, and maybe, you know, the produce that you provide, uh, that you, uh, make in your garden you can sell those you can give those away to uh, the poor or you can help set up a garden in perhaps an area where they cannot afford something and they, that can provide food for them as well as it can help the climate as well so uh yes uh, climate change is a big part of our branding but uh, particularly to you know it only entices you know particular offices or maybe some institutions but it will not entice the average uh, garden the average home to a little home garden. all right asan maybe you can answer this it's just when i'm thinking of like especially when you get a lot of these gardens on rooftops what are some of the challenges of maintaining these gardens i mean they start growing they're doing really well and i guess you guys provide you know help and support on how to maintain them but what are, what are some of the issues and challenges that come up when you have so many of them up there uh, thank you. I can uh, I can I can take this challenge in, as an opportunity here because uh, when we first started uh, setting up the rooftop garden, then our next concern was to maintain this because setting a rooftop garden is not a big deal. It's not a it's not a big task, but to maintain this, to uh, to to uh, take care of this, um, to for pest management, uh, even pest control, nutrient management. That that were that that were, that were these were the uh, toughest part for a city dweller who ha haven't uh, technical expertise on it. Then we thought that we can start a profession. We can create a new profession that is a tree doctor, and and it can it can open a new domain of employment uh, for the youth in the city because we have um, we have four hundred five hundred thousand open rooftop here in, available in the city. So uh, to maintain all the rooftop garden. Uh, we need more than uh, more than one one hundred thousand uh, gardener um, as a, uh, who who can who can create uh, that can create a new profession in the city for the youth. So that was uh, the most exciting part uh, um, uh, to to uh, run this uh, initiative because we thought that um, uh, by making group of garden, uh, um, we as we are uh, in enhancing the function of plants in the urban ecosystem and and and, and also. We are creating a new employment opportunity uh, for the youth in the city, uh, and and and, uh, that, and and when we thought that um, if we can train the gardener uh, um, in a in a huge number.
then they can find their job. They can knock the door to the city dweller to make their uh, rooftop green. So that will uh, automatically uh, increase the number of gardens in the city. Um, that was uh, so um, we, we thought the risk part from the very beginning because we thought that when we will set up the garden, uh, immediately we will they will need the maintenance and take care support. So when we started the gardening, uh, simultaneously we started the plant care maintenance support by the tree doctor together and and and, and immediate after that we said we started mobile tree hospital and 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 the, the and, and and the tree hospital uh um services uh in the city okay so i'm getting questions from the community rooms from kayla and I, i'm not sure who wants to answer this but what process are you advocating for to maintain soil health on these rooftop gardens artificial fertilizer hydroponics etc that's not i think you sort of answered that a little bit but like how do you maintain soil health up there because it's not able to kind of go onto the dirt so oh thank you um we have fortunately we have a very good quality of soil here we, we do not need to use any other particles like, like perlite, vermiculite, or, or any other particle. We, our soil quality is very good. We just um, uh, use cow dung as a natural fertilizer and, 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 uh, and, uh, and compost uh, and, and uh, vermicompost. Um, these uh, equipments we uh, produce by ourselves uh, to support the urban gardener. Uh, and, and we have some integrated pest management system that is uh, in internationally called IPM. We use some um, extract of, uh, of our natural plants and plant leaves that is working very well so far. Uh, and, and we are very hopeful that is we'll be able to solve all the plants related uh, problem of urban uh, rooftop garden by uh, um, uh, biological pest management uh, methods. Okay. and. Uh Chadman, I'm going to ask you this question. And even, from... and even hydroponics, you know, uh, now hydroponics is very popular in the city. We have initiated the product hydroponics uh, last two years and uh, people are um, started uh, welcoming this product uh, and, and they're taking this uh, product from us. And the number of um, hydroponic uh, farmer or, or cultivator is increasing uh, dramatically. This is the uh, this is the uh, inspiring part, I, I can tell you, that is... Um, by next two to three years, we are hopeful that is about uh, many people will start hydroponic cultivation uh, that will save time, save spaces, uh, and, and and save uh, money as well. All right, great. That's very exciting. And so, Shad, my question from you from um, Mike, and do you think you ha can make enough rooftop gardens eventually to feed the entire city? Wow, that'd be a challenge. But what, what do you think like that? Uh, that's what that's our dream actually to uh, <laughs> but to be able to feed an entire city i don't think only uh, rooftop gardens will be enough uh, that's part of the reason why we introduce hydroponics because a lot of rooftop gardens don't have an adequate sunlight just to feed even one family right so hydroponics uh, the brilliant thing about hydroponics is you you need like a very small amount of space and it just rises up vertically so we have a couple of uh, experimentally, we set up a couple of hydroponics at a couple of restaurants as well. And we're trying right now, what we're experimenting on is uh, we're trying to provide, say, X kilograms or X amount of uh, cabbages. For example, a restaurant uh, just last month, a restaurant in the Math Chef, uh, one of the most popular restaurants in Bangladesh, came over and he, the founder was all, hey, listen, we provide, uh, we need uh, around 10 kilograms of uh, lettuce. Uh, per year, so uh, per month. So uh, can that per be day, done? Per day. Per day. I'm sorry. Yeah. So can that be done? So we did a bit of calculations and we told them, yes, yeah, so only, and we actually managed to uh, calculate and managed to provide that amount and even more in only around what, 50 or 500 uh, square meters? Uh, was it, Hassan Bhai? How uh, much space? No, 50, 50, 50 square meters. Only fifty square meters. We we wow. took and we uh, and we could provide around, uh, say that was around one hundred kilograms of lettuce in that in that space, and even there's space for even more. So uh, this is very promising. Like uh, maybe even we can feed at least half the city in a couple of years' time if every wow. house has hydroponic systems. So. That, that's exciting. All right, here's another question from Sarah, and maybe Asan, I think you could answer this, is what kind of tree ailments do tree doctors typically treat, and how do you treat them? 
Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, for rooftop garden, there are specific diseases and, and, and pests for the rooftop garden. So our uh, our plant doctor are well trained with the, especially with the uh, disease and, and pest control, pest, pest management of the uh, of uh, uh, rooftop garden plants. Uh, so uh, so they have uh, all the equipments for uh, for uh, measuring pH, moisture, and 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 and, and something easy uh, and sometimes. Uh, uh, so, uh, some equipment for to see the uh, efficiency, uh, efficiency, the power meter to see the sunlight efficiency and other tools they have, uh, and and they have uh, you know first aid box with it, they with it, with them uh, with with some uh, uh, available medicine when they visit a uh, garden, they uh, support uh, with some instant magic spray for the tree. That is we we call it panacea uh, for for the. Uh, for the plants, and and they uh, write the prescriptions, uh, suggest some medicine or nutrient uh, and nutrient uh, for for uh, the affected plants or 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 or, or, uh, or malnutrition uh, plants with malnutrition. Then then uh, they can even source from uh, nearby areas, or they can source from us. All right, great. Okay, and here's a question from Islam. Well, may I give this one to you, Shaiman? Do you think frequent campaigning will dramatically increase the number of rooftop gardens in Dhaka? Approximately, how many rooftop rooftop gardens do you want to have by the end of 2025? So you've sort of talked right. about like what you're shooting for, but you have number of rooftops. Yeah. Uh, so we have, like we, you know, I think Asam uh, also repeated it. Uh, we have around 500, a little over 500,000 rooftops in. Dhaka, and uh, I I think it's a mix of campaigning as well as providing adequate service and the availability of the garden materials and the gardeners as well because that's one of the key challenges that we're facing right now. So because uh, since 2010 to 2020, out of those 500,000, we only covered around five. We managed to cover only 5,000 uh, rooftop gardens uh, with our uh, you know gardening team. So we have a team of around uh 20 25 uh three doctors we, whom you know currently at least employed uh but uh, currently what we're facing is uh, we need a lot more people a lot more young people particularly with uh, innovative ideas coming into this field and uh providing this gardening services because it's a lucrative industry i mean there's barely any players in dhaka inside it and uh, if more people come in uh, into the gardening service field particularly i think it's possible to have at least half of the city filled with uh, rooftop gardens by the end of 2025 or maybe even 2030. All right. So we're getting toward the end of the episode here. And, you know, it's very exciting. And I'm sure the expression is out there. But, we, you know, in the United States, it's we have from farm to table, meaning using local farms to get food on the tables. And so, you know, here's rooftop to table. I don't know if you use that as a pitch to sell, but I'd like to see more of that. Well, to, you know, to wrap things up, Asana, I'm just going to close it out with you. What's next? What, what's the next six months? What's next year for you guys? What's on your plate? Uh, thank you. We are uh, trying to expand our oxygen banking model in the school because we believe that if we uh, if we motivate the school children with oxygen banking, plantations, and, and plant care, and we, if we create love and empathy for plants to the kids, they will be prepared for the next as a next generation to make their city green uh, and they will motivate their parents from the very beginning to make the city green and in this process from school to household we are hopeful that is uh, by next uh, five years we'll would be able to um, uh, cover more than 100,000 rooftop garden in the city and uh, also we are we are trying to expand our uh, in our uh, our uh, services to the district levels uh, divisions level even and and uh, we are uh, we are trying to motivate uh, uh, youth entrepreneur to start work work um, on on urban agriculture so that because if this we think that we believe this is an unified effort uh, many organization like green savers needs to work together to make the city uh, green and sustain this for long run so uh, uh, so we are trying to uh, work with more schools um, more um, big and, and set up more oxygen bank in the schools and in this process we are we are we are trying to enter the household and make their rooftop green and and we are uh, we are hopeful that is uh, other advanced agricultural technology that like hydroponics aquaponics uh, these are would be available um, very soon uh, by our effort 
and, and we would be able to give better support uh, to the city dweller. And most importantly, we will be able to create more uh, employment as a gardener profession for the youth in the future. Very exciting. Well, this has been great. I think I'm going to go on Google Earth and go check out and see if I can find some of the gardens on those rooftops after this episode. But thanks for coming on. And I want to take you to just chatting. So give us a second here. But I do want to thank you for coming on this episode and for the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank thanks you. for having us. All right. We'll be right back. Hold on just a second.